Hello, my name is Daniel Ripley from CG Dreams. And today we're going to be looking at a feature within ZBrush that's been there for some time, and that is creasing. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because I feel that this is probably one of those tools that really gets under uh, appreciated and looked at of how effective and useful it can really be, especially for character work. So as you can see in front of you, you've got this base mesh that I built, very low polygon, and I've taken the time to build certain loops in certain places so that I can have the form hold its own shape at very low polygon levels. You can also see that I've done pretty much the same for the face. I've got all the loops in all the places that I want to be able to deform it properly for animation. So why do we go ahead and bring this mesh in and subdivide it and start to sculpt the forms and details into it and tend to lose the very reason why we're actually building this nice topology in the first place. Let me just explain this a little bit more clear and in detail what I'm talking about here. And I'll do this by showing you. I'm just going to concentrate just on the head for a second here. Now, if you look at the loops that I have here, you can see there's obvious loops around the mouth, around the eyes, and you can see they're a little bit untidy. And when I first brought this mesh in, they wasn't that untidy. They were very neat, and you can see that I've actually got some of this loop around the uh, eye here, starting on the outside and kind of tucking in under the inside and then going back out again. This isn't the way I designed this mesh. But of course, as soon as you start to subdivide and you start to sculpt, well, you tend to kind of lose really the, the uh, loops that you've been using until you go back down to the lower subdivisional levels. And what this results in is that when you bring this mesh into your main rendering program, if you're not rendering within ZBrush, that really the detail and the form and the shapes um, are held within the displacement map, not within the geometry itself. And you can see this very clearly when I subdivide this model. So you can see here that I've created the mouth shape. There's nothing wrong with um, the way that I've shaped the mouth. It's the way I personally chose to do it in this particular model. But what is wrong is the fact that I've not been using the edge loops that I've actually taken the time to put there in the first place. You can see very clearly that I haven't done this. Let's just get a little bit closer here. So up to that point now you can start to see that I've got this filtering area right down the, for the center here. It's completely deviating from the topology which I built, which can really hold this shape. So why have I done it the way I've done it? Well, I've done it the way I've done it because that's the way probably I've done it for many, many years. And um, recently I've decided to start using the crease tool. And the crease tool is going to hold the geometry in place right up through your subdivisional levels. And this means that when you're shaping the, like the lips and the eyes, it means that it's going to hold it right at the lowest subdivisional level all the way through to the end. Um, and it really does make a difference, believe me. So that's isolate just the mouth as we're talking about the mouth. And I'm just going to hide. Control shift and then let go and then hold the Alt key. Okay. The edge of the lips is right here. So I'm going to bring it right down to where the edge is. Okay. So I want a crease edge around there. So let's go to my geometry tab here. You can see we've got this crease, this text here opened up. And 
I don't have to have the level as high as that. I can take it down a little bit and you can choose the tolerance and the crease level. Experiment with this just to see how much effect that it actually makes. But I found that this is quite um, fine for what I'm doing and hit crease. Now what's happened is, is you can see here that it's put a crease around the lips, as you can see there. Now when I subdivide, you can see the old sculpting that I've actually got there, that where I kind of deviated away from the topology. And you can see that we've clearly got this crease level where the geometry really is. And you can see where I've gone out of bounds where the geometry is or the topology so I say. So what can we do about this? Well the first thing to do is obviously don't subdivide it and make the mistake that I've made to start with. You want to work your way up and push the detail into it from the lowest subdivision level by sticking to these um, creased edges. So what I'm going to do because I have made the mistake of doing it the way I'm doing it I'm just going to get rid of some of this sculpting that I had been doing. Smooth that down. Especially this lower lip. I can always build the shape back underneath that again when I need to. Okay, now let's go back down use the the move brush the topological move brush we've got the shape made by the original edge loop of the lips pushed all the way up through the subdivisional levels and look at the decrease level there. We can obviously smooth this down a little bit. build a little bit of this up here so essentially what I'm telling you and showing you is is if you have got a good mesh you've made one yourself or you're using one that you've already got make the most of the loops use them use the loops that are there and push them up with using the crease exactly the same for the eyes you can get a really nice neat edge and on this model, I haven't used the uh, the crease, and it's quite clear I haven't, because you can see that we've got these loops that are kind of underfolding on the eye, and they're coming over the top, and that's not very pretty at all. It really, isn't very pretty at all. In fact, if I was just to isolate this eye. It. and I'll bring in a model that I have used the crease on and if we look at the edge of this eye look how much more neater it is we've actually used the edge of the loop for the eye all the way up for the geometry by using this particular method of creasing But look how neat we've actually made managed to do this and of course we can use this on things like nails for the fingers where of course you subdivide you lose its form and shape use it wherever you need to add a crease and i've simply just done this with this particular model that i've been working on i haven't really done much else other than that at this particular point no details been added just basic form sculpting so it's definitely worth spending the time to use that crease function for your model definitely worth doing because you're going to end up with much better topology in the long run 
um, or should I say much better cleaner surfaces in the long run without having to deviate away from the topology that you've already got there you can see the topology is kept nice and neat to the forms that I've desired to sculpt and shape finally when you do choose to make your um, your displacement maps you want to uncrease all so you can see this button here uncrease all and what this does enables um, you to generate the um, generate the displacement map without nast no nasty lines that may be around the lips this basically allows your geometry to remain as it is and um, really does hold its own form and it definitely will um, look a lot better for it so just a little tip there really just to use the crease tool to hold the edges of the loops that you've taken the time to make or are already there on the model that you're using because what's the point really of of sculpting different forms and shapes onto a model that's able to hold its own form mm -hmm.